Once they smell a currency crisis happening, they'll start stacking gold, which is what we're seeing. The central banks don't stack silver because they don't have room for it. It's not efficient enough. Mm -hmm. um, and there's only a few central banks and there's only a few vaults they can put stuff in. Yeah. Um, so they're going to stack gold. And then they're not going to tell the public that they're the currency. Problem. The end of 2024. Well, I don't. Uh, I usually don't have hard dollar targets, but I can tell you, I can try to tell you uh, what I what I see based on what might happen in the monetary system. Um, right. So we have the situation now where QT quantitative tightening is continuing. And, uh, you know, that sounds like a technical term and it's annoying, but it, it basically means the, the pool of dollars on which to build debt is shrinking. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the pool of debt is growing because people are taking out more debt with less dollars, with less of a monetary base, take out that debt. Um, if we do see some kind of uh, mathematical oopsie with that, meaning mm -hmm. you know, like people can't take out debt anymore because there aren't enough dollars on which to take it out, right? Then you have uh, the beginning of a collapse of another pyramid, and uh, if that happens, uh, gold and silver should go down sharply, very temporarily, like mm -hmm. ephemerally, until the Fed moves. Um, is in terms of what what gold and silver are going to do until that happens, I really don't know. Um, my thesis is that there's going to be one last crash in that sense of, you know, the, the debt pyramid crumbling down and then central banks are going to have to move all over the world. Right. And once they do, then, then I think there's going to be an end game. And now we could discuss, is that going to be the last one? Is there going to be another cycle? Like, let's say the last one was in 2020, right. one before that was in 2008. Is there going to be one in 2024? And then, you know, wait another two, three years and there's going to be another final one. I don't think so. I think there's going to be one final one. And uh, it 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 could easily happen uh, by the end of 2024, but it, it could take a little longer than that. The key is to uh, to to understand what's going on and not necessarily look for a dollar target uh, in either right. gold or silver uh, to uh, you know to to cash out, and then you say I made X percent or I made this amount of dollars, now I can retire. Because the point is that the dollar is dying and it's going to die completely at some point. And once it does, it doesn't matter what your dollar profits are. So we, you have to kind of switch your mentality from trying to make, trying to use gold and silver to make dollar profits to using your dollars to stack gold and silver and then getting out of the dollar system. It's the dollar system. Right. It's the problem. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what I've been researching most recently is that I'm seeing that uh, bank reserves are falling. The bank reserves is, is yeah. basically that high, that high powered money. It's not quite the monetary base. It's something very close to it. And with the technical differences, it doesn't really matter. Um, but bank reserves on which the banks build their own debt uh, is, is shrinking slowly. Right. And uh, the last crisis, the regional banking crisis happened when we were at like $3 trillion of bank reserves. And now we're at like 3.27 trillion. So we've got like a $270 billion buffer, assuming that the crisis point is at 3 trillion. It could be a little bit higher than that, a little bit lower right. than that, whatever. Um, and uh, we could we could hit that number, you know, in a few weeks, a few months. But once we do, then I would say like, if you don't have your full positions and, you, and you've been wanting to have more gold and silver, if we're at $3 trillion, uh, it reserves. Then uh, at that point, I might I might wait for uh, you know a little bit of a swoop down if I'm trading. Right. If I'm stacking, if I'm stacking, it doesn't really make a difference because once that happens and you're stacking, then premiums go like way up, and you don't really save any money by waiting for a better price anyway. If I was a central bank, I would buy gold just to be safe because that's what people, even people who don't really quite understand what's going on, that's what they do. It's in our right. DNA. So if you're a central bank, you do that. Now, I just want to say one thing about central bank gold buying. I'm not sure that it matters. It might matter. I haven't really decided on this. Right. Um, the first thing, that, that take a step back for a second. When I hear, when I see these um, these headlines, let's say, the BRICS countries are moving to other currencies and they're diversifying currencies and other central banks are buying other currencies. I said, like, who cares about that? Because other right. currencies are just dollar derivatives. So fine, they're stepping away from the dollar one step down the pyramid or one step up the pyramid, whatever direction you want to say. But other currencies are still dollars because other central banks still own dollars. Absolutely. Now, as as for the as for the gold, central banks buying gold, it could be significant, but it might not be. And the the reason that it might not be is that once the dollar does collapse, and by that I mean there is no longer an exchange rate between gold and silver 
and the dollar anymore, which means the dollar cannot buy anything mm -hmm. um, by the Misesian regression principle, which I hammer home, which is the point of the end game investor. I try to get, you know, a logical backing to all of this. So you understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, it might not matter because once that major pyramid falls, then the gold that central banks have is going to have to be tested. It's not like they can start a Ponzi scheme from the middle of the scheme. Right. right. In order to start a Ponzi scheme, you have to start with basic trust from your clients and a, a record of profits, a record of experience. And then you can start uh, messing around with stuff and, and fooling around with your books. Right. But what what they what they want to do is they want to say, oh, the dollar collapsed. Well, look, uh, we're the central bank of whatever, the European Central Bank, and we have all this gold. So accept euros because they're backed by gold. Well, why would anybody believe it? If the dollar just collapsed, the people are going to have to actually be able to exchange this stuff, and the central Absolutely. bank wouldn't want to do that. And if they're forced to, if they're forced to do that in order to uh, to um, prove that their currencies are worth something, then what's the difference between a central bank has it or you have it? It's much safer if you have it or you know, not, you know, put it in a vault somewhere or whatever, right, right, or a service than trusting a central bank, uh, you know, who. Their, the purpose of their existence is to fool you. It's, it's a race between demented people starting nuclear war and the collapse of the currency. That's right. what we're talking about. Um, you know, this is, I don't believe that the world is going to end, but this, the scale of what's going on now has the potential to end the planet. I'm not, I'm not right. a doomer in that sense that I'm building a bunker and I expect nuclear war, but, but I see, uh, like, if I were God, <laughs> right, <laughs> and I see the, the chess pieces going on here, this is like 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis kind of stuff. Yeah, times right? ten. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, except you know we're not do, we're not we're not even running commercials, uh, you know, public service announcements like the 1950s duck and cover. You know, we're not doing that. We're just like showing debates of demented people yelling at each other about golf. I just found out something uh, that I never knew before, or that I, not never I, I I wasn't following it, but it was shocking to me. A friend called me yesterday. Mm -hmm. And said, uh, Rafi, I got a platinum coin and I want to trade you for silver. I was like, really? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> so I have plenty of silver. I don't have, I didn't have any platinum. I mean, I've, I've always wanted one cause I just, I think it's cool. Me too. So yeah. I was like, yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, I, I looked at the, I looked at the ratio I calculated. I was like, okay, so I'll give you 34 ounces for one ounce of platinum. He's like, yeah, okay. So, you know, I, I, I go, I go to my silver stacks, I stack 34 ounce coins nice. and he gives me a platinum, he gives me a platinum ounce. And, uh, and then I look, and then he, he leaves. And then I look at the, I look at the ratio going back to like 1971 that you can find on, on gold charts or us. And, and it's at an all time low, meaning oh, silver, man. silver as at an all time high, except for 1980 itself, except for that. Brief right. Spike. So silver is at an all time high relative to platinum. I was like, wow, I, I just got a really good deal. Maybe um, in terms of the the, um, the the concept of silver over gold. Well, we know that gold is bank money and silver right. is the public money. Right. Um, the public can't pass around gold. It's too valuable, uh, but use it to buy businesses or yachts or cars um, or make big deals between countries, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, when when the so. You would expect that once the banks, the central banks, the big players, once they smell a currency crisis happening, they'll start stacking gold, which is what we're seeing. The central banks don't stack silver because they don't have room for it. It's not efficient enough. Mm -hmm. um, and there's only a few central banks and there's only a few vaults that they can put stuff in. Yeah. Um, so they're going to stack gold. And then they're not going to tell the public that there's a currency problem. They're just going to keep stacking gold. And then once the public catches on to the currency crisis – they will go to silver, not for any intellectual reason, but for, you know, fight, fight or flight response, economic right. fight or flight response. That's what people will do. So once we see silver really making a moonshot in terms of dollars and in terms of gold, we should see a 15 to 1 ratio of gold to silver. Wow. Uh, and that should be literally the end game because that's when the the, the public gives up on the currency. Yeah. Uh, and it's happened three times since 1919. And the currency has recovered each time. This time, I do not think it will. And we'll be at a 51 ratio of, of gold to silver, and that'll be it. And then for a while, for a few months, until we build up civilization and a monetary system to a sufficient degree, people will be passing around these coins to buy basic necessities for a little while.